Xbox Game Pass continues to prove itself time and time again as the best subscription service in gaming, with a list currently sitting at over 400 titles. The bang for your buck is insane, especially that first month costing you a single dollar. If you own an Xbox or PC and don't own Game Pass yet, I strongly urge that you pick it up. It's truly phenomenal. But with so many games to choose from, it can be a little bit difficult to know where to start. Naturally, I haven't played every single title available on Game Pass, but I have played quite a few that have been great. Starting off, let's get the heavy hitters or must-own titles out of the way. On this list, there are bound to be a few that would be right for you. Halo has been Xbox's big game, starting all the way back on the original Xbox. Some fans around the globe even buy each Xbox generation just to get their hands on the next Halo title. And now with Xbox Game Pass, you can play every Halo game ever released, including the brand new Halo Infinite. No matter if you just want to re-experience the Halo saga or if you're new to the series, pick up some guns, grab a friend, save the world. While it was originally met with some criticism, Sea of Thieves has really built on what it was and is now a really good game. It has truly become THE pirate simulator, so if you want to sail the seas with your crew singing sea shanties and getting into epic battles with other crews or creatures of the deep, then this is definitely a game I would recommend. Gotta get that booty. Even though these games were never for me, excluding them from the list would be a sin. Gears of War could be considered as Xbox's second biggest franchise after Halo, with sales of the original trilogy outperforming Halo sales at one point. Gears of War is a brutally dark and gory third-person shooter where you take on a subterranean species known as the Locust Horde. High-octane action like you wouldn't believe. Microsoft bought Bethesda last year, so a lot of their titles have made it onto Game Pass. 30 to be more precise. Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, The Evil Within, Prey, and Rage. This is a wonderful mixed bag of games, with at the very least one being right up your alley. Personally, I had written myself off as not a racing kind of guy. Well, except that one time I got drunk, turned into Scott the Wasp, and bought Stunt Racer. But I digress. When I saw that Forza Horizon 5 was on Game Pass, I thought to myself, I do really enjoy driving around at high speeds in games like GTA. Maybe I would like this game. And man was I right. Horizon 5 has become one of the most played titles on my Series S. Visually, the game is absolutely stunning with loads of high octane fun to be had. Even if you are like I was and wouldn't consider buying a game like this, with Xbox Game Pass, there's very little reason not to give it a try. Move to Egypt, they said. It'll be warm, they said. Anyway, with those out of the way, I'd like to share some of my personal favorite Game Pass games. The original Fable is the first game I ever played on an Xbox, and I'm eagerly awaiting the next installment in the franchise. If you are too, then this is a great time to replay the original titles. For those of you who don't know what Fable is, it's a medieval fantasy RPG where the player can choose whether to be heroic or evil, with the world around them adjusting to their choices. Running around Albion making poor life decisions is never not fun. Hades is hands down my favorite roguelite in existence. It's won so many Game of the Year awards for a reason. Even after completing enough runs to finish the main story, the game continues to feel fresh since you keep having new conversations with the characters in the game. When I boot up my Series S for a quick 30 to 45 minute session, then this is my go-to, knowing that it'll be an extremely satisfying experience. And this is only one of loads of great indie titles. Hollow Knight, Celeste, Enter the Gungeon, Terraria, Undertale, and both Ori games, just to name a few. If you're an indie type of person, then you will find yourself swimming in value. Outer Wilds is a space exploration mystery game where you have to figure out how to stop something from happening. I have so much to say about this game, but I truly feel that it should be experienced blind, or at least as blind as you can. I would avoid any reviews with spoilers in them. The base game was added to Game Pass this month, and I cannot recommend it enough. The recent expansion to the game is also phenomenal. It's my favorite game right now, definitely give it a shot. The original Psychonauts remains as one of my favorite wacky platformers till this day, with Psychonauts 2 being just as good if not better. Psychonauts 2 builds on everything that the original Psychonauts did so well. Even if you never played Psychonauts, I can still recommend playing the sequel. However, the original Xbox game is also on Game Pass, so if you want to experience the full story, you could always play that first before proceeding to the sequel. If you're in the market for a 3D platformer, these two games will definitely be for you. There has never really been a game to nail skateboarding as well as skate does. Before this series of games, all we really had to go with were the Tony Hawk games, which took a much more arcadey approach to skating, while Skate takes a more simulation type approach, where you use the right stick to do tricks, which is extremely satisfying. 
There have been attempts to create spiritual successors in games like Session and Skater XL, but I feel like they're trying too hard to reinvent the gameplay by using one stick for each foot. For me, the skate games are still the best skateboarding games around, and I really hope we eventually end up getting Skate 4. But for now, Skate 1 and Skate 3 are available on Game Pass Ultimate. I highly recommend checking them out. Much like The Outer Wilds, I can't talk too much about this game without spoiling the experience. The Forgotten City is set 2000 years in the past, with your character being transported to an ancient Roman city populated with incredibly interesting characters. However, the city is cursed with a single rule. If one person sins, everybody dies. Through a strange ritual you don't fully understand, your character is transported back to a pre-sin time in the city every time this happens. Armed with the knowledge of every loop you go through, it is up to you to figure out this mystery, help the city and end the loop. Just like Outer Wilds, this game completely captured me and I cannot recommend it enough. Stay away from spoilers though. Now while Xbox doesn't have the greatest catalogue of retro games like you'd see on Nintendo and to some extent the Sony Playstation, it does have a great compilation in Rare Replay. Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, Perfect Dark, Killer Instinct Gold, Jet Force Gemini, Conker's Bad Fur Day. If you were a Nintendo 64 fan, chances are you'll recognize a few of these games. While yes, we are missing some games from Nintendo's IPs like Donkey Kong Country games and DK64, I think this lineup makes up for it in droves. If you enjoy games like Dark Souls and like the Star Wars IP, then Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is most likely for you. Taking place five years after Revenge of the Sith, you play as Cal, a Jedi Padawan laying low to avoid being taken out by the Empire. Obviously though, the plot needs to happen, so this doesn't last very long, with the Empire finding out about your existence. The combat is extremely satisfying and brutally hard at times, but it truly makes you feel like a Jedi, probably more so than any other Star Wars games I have ever played. Stardew Valley is a game that people have been raving about for years, and I really wanted to figure out what the fuss was about. I do think I booted the game up across three different systems at least 10 times though before it finally clicked. I have yet to play it on my Series S, but I can only assume the experience is just as good if not better than the Switch version where I usually play it. At the end of the last year, my girlfriend and I spent 300 plus hours tending to our farm together, and I'm not lying when I say that every second was a joy. I understand completely that this game is not for everyone, with the gameplay loop consisting of farming and talking to NPCs. Much like the Harvest Moon games of the past, you have to make your own fun. I would say that since it is on Game Pass, just give it a try and maybe even though you think it won't be for you, just like I did, it could win you over. When the Xbox One was originally announced, there was only one game that caught my eye, and that was Sunset Overdrive. What really sold it for me was the movement, reminding me a lot of Jet Set Radio, which is a franchise I've always really enjoyed. Combining that with incredibly ridiculous weapons in an energy drink fueled zombie apocalypse, well, it just seemed like a lot of fun. However, just like a lot of other people, the initial announcement of the Xbox One left a terrible taste in my mouth and I ended up skipping that entire generation of Xbox. But now with it being on Game Pass, I finally got to try it out and I'm pleased to say that I really enjoy it. Sunset Overdrive does not take itself seriously for a second and I love that with your character constantly breaking the fourth wall and weapons like the Dude, which launches bowling balls that bounce around at high speed. If you're into high speed over the top gameplay, then definitely give this game a try. Now all these games are just a drop in the bucket of what's available in Xbox Game Pass, and there are some genres that aren't really for me, like fighting games or turn-based RPGs. However, my good friend Sean from the channel Chaotic Meatball knows a lot more about these kind of games, so I'd like to invite him over to speak about the ones that are worthy of your time. Take it away, Sean. Hey everybody, Chaotic Meatball here, and thanks Nick for having me on your video today. Uh, while you may not be the biggest fan of fighting games, I know that this genre is an integral part to the childhoods of many. The arcade scene was more than thriving in the 90s and early 2000s, with kids all over experiencing things like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And though the former doesn't have anything on Game Pass, Mortal Kombat 11 is available and a great modern entry to the series. It keeps gory, over-the-top fatalities while also having some cool interactions between the fighters before each match, with unique dialogue for each of them. Another good shout is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, a team-based fighter around the continuity of Boom Studios' comics including dozens of rangers from the series, and if you are sorely missing Street Fighter, both Ryu and Chun-Li are available as fighters in their exclusive ranger forms in this game. I'm a bit biased to tell you that this is the one you'd probably want to pick up because I have a Power Ranger helmet collection, but I really think it's one of the best fighting games that's come out in modern memory. 
The last one I'd recommend is Injustice 2, a DC-centric fighting game with plenty of popular characters to choose from, like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and many others, and with some very surprising DLC fighters. Sure, the Mortal Kombat characters like Raiden and Sub-Zero make sense when you look back at the origins of Injustice with Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Well, at least they didn't end up in the Power Rangers fighting game. That could have ended poorly like last time. You want rangers? You gotta go through turtles! But I'm not just here to talk about fighting games. I am what they call an RPG guy, specifically a turn-based RPG guy. And the audience for this genre has been growing in recent years, so I figured it would make sense to share some of the games that are generally considered to be among the best in the genre. Two action RPGs come to mind here first though, the first being Code Vein, basically Dark Souls but anime. It has that Soulsborne gameplay that's known for being pretty difficult, and with none of those games being available on the service, this is a go-to for those sorts of players. However, I've gotta give the most recognition to Nier Automata, a heavy story-driven action RPG that I've gotten the chance to fully sit down and play through, and the 50 hours that I spent was one of the most mind-boggling boggling adventures I've ever been on in a video game. And to top it all off, the soundtrack in this game is an experience in and of itself. I'd highly recommend it. Alright, now for the turn-based ones. One of my favorites off of the list is Octopath Traveler. Originally a Switch exclusive, I had played it as soon as it came out for Nintendo's offerings because it had such a hodgepodge of great aspects. A 2D art style akin to the SNES Final Fantasy games, a battle system reminiscent of Bravely Default for the 3DS, another RPG I enjoyed heavily, an insanely in-depth story with 8 different characters to work through, all with 4 chapters apiece for a grand total of 32, and again to top it off, the soundtrack is a joy to listen to. The main theme, Battle 1, 2, and 3, Decisive Battle 2, and Daughter of the Dark God are some of the most intriguing pieces of music I've ever heard in a video game. So even if you're not a turn-based RPG fan, give this one a shot. It might surprise you. Last but not least, if you're not one to try something brand new, you can stick with some classics. Final Fantasy X and X-2's HD remasters are available on Game Pass and are some of the best in the series. Sure, the thing you may be picturing is Titus's horrible laughter that's often taken out of context, but the rest of the game is a long, fulfilling, fun experience that can be fun to work through a few hours at a time. All I can say is try for yourself and see if it's for you. Just don't touch 13 or 13 too. We don't need another generation realizing that a hallway simulator was the best they could do during the Xbox 360 generation. Well, that's all the time I've got. Thank you again, Nick, for having me on this video, and I'll see y'all later. Thanks a lot, Sean. I will state once again, though, that even with Sean's inclusions, there are plenty of games that we don't mention on here that could be for you. And now with Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, there's plenty more to come. Xbox Game Pass is, in my opinion, worth every penny. And with that, we've arrived at the end of this video. If you liked what you saw and want to see more like it, then consider subscribing. And while you're down there, liking the video also really helps me out. Are there any games on Game Pass that you really enjoyed that we didn't mention? Then leave a comment, let's start a conversation. Also, if you enjoy Pokemon and watching content about it, Sean's channel Chaotic Meatball would be right up your alley. My personal favorite series of his is the Professor Oak's Challenge series, where he figures out how long it takes to complete the Pokedex in a Pokemon game. Give it a watch, it's a lot of fun. This has been Nick Noir, and I'll see you all soon.